Hello and welcome. Supreme Commander Forge Alliance Forever. We left off a best of five and one to one between these two players in the final of the Legend of Stars qualifier number two. Third map is Loki. Before we start, there is a new streamer called Nartek. So, did I say streamer? I meant caster. He's casting replays of 1v1 players in sort of the mid tier of ladder. He's also casting team games. So, cool to have a new caster. I'll link in the description. So go check him out, subscribe to him, he already has a few videos up, that's what we'd like to see, and now we'll get into this game, so well, that's first lab from Thomas, alright, so that is an unusual start from Thomas here, he's sending his first engineer expanding, so really prioritizing these mexes and this Mass getting some reclaim here on the way as well. Not building a factory at the end either, which is again maximizing his reclaim. So, wants a lot of mass. This is very quick expansion, but it's gonna mean he doesn't get the juicy, juicy trees. He is perhaps gonna be lacking power then without that tree reclaim, but you can see he's not overly well he's being a little greedy on power here he's only four power generators before the land factory his engineers have not started reclaiming trees so that could be a problem this lab is so early that it's actually aiming to get into the back of the base where it will be very annoying now a scout will be spotted will spot it and the scout will die and the sound will give away that there's a lab here this engineer immediately retreats towards the base to uh, try and keep it alive but that's not the target and because the scout died yeah Tagada actually is expecting that it's this way but the air scout comes out and spots the lab so now this tank will follow but this lab could be pretty devastating I didn't see if Thomas was stalled power there and I will now never know as I watch this back again, I should have checked. He, I feel like he did. I feel like he probably did, but uh, I don't know. Could have been okay. Maybe he practiced this build. One kill. Come on, get the second. He should get the second with good micro. Oh, Tagata goes for the factory block and can't make it work because the lab is just too close to actually fit the factory in between. Very nice. Kills. He even is gets away from the tank, kills the scout, four kills now, two scouts and two engineers have died at the hands of this lab and he's gonna run after this engineer now. This tank won't catch him on this trajectory. Another tank from the base, this one coming out of this factory should be sent to cut off the retreat of the lab. Let's see Tagada's economy now. No mass. See, this tree reclaim not only gives power, it also gives mass, and uh, those mexes are delayed quite a bit. The ACU is leaving the base, and yes, finally the lab does get eliminated. Tom is also leaving the base now, but with significantly nicer looking economy. So much resource, so many resources, but not being spent, a mex is, is started. And that seems like quite a reasonable investment. This maybe could be a problem. We have mass in the bank, negative power, and only one engineer building P gens there. This expansion is quite slow. Oh, because he didn't immediately send engineers there, and now it's going to be even slower with a bomber taking out one of those engineers. And maybe the second will be dodged. Dodge, dodge. That's not a dodge. That is far from a dodge. That's very necessary damage from Tagada. Necessary after what he went through uh, versus that lab. Great opening from Thomas, but this uh, makes it look a lot worse for him. A lot less impressive. 
Now you can see extra engineers added to assist air and an extra engineer building power. The mechs has been paused, which I don't like, but it's, the problem is power for him. He doesn't want to lose air too hard. He's already behind in air, so he decides he pause the mechs to get more air production going. Not too many units, and this is a very bad fight. Things like this should not look innocuous to the viewers. Losing tanks like that means, uh, well, he probably doesn't get to kill his engineer. I guess he doesn't have anything here because he already lost those engineers, so that's not such a factor. But uh, always painful to lose uh, those 3v2s, 4v2 tank battles early on in the game. Especially when you can generally avoid them. He's running for the tank, the engineer, but the tanks are in the way. Engineer actually doesn't even take a shot there. There's quite a few tanks on the top side for Tagada. But Thomas, again, he's very quick in his expansion. Not only to here, but also to all of these mechs on the bottom. And so he has that secured, and he's actually running to the corner. He's going to even try and take that. We have an en a tank here to block engineers coming across the water. Quite funny that both both the guys lost their engineers in these expansions. Oh no, this is so slow now. This is really slow. You can see how many of the trees are left. And Antier got a lot of damage done though. So Thomas with better mass, but is he turning it into tanks? He is turned it into a T2 max. He's making a transport, which is probably the reason he's stalling power. Transports are the most expensive T1 unit by quite a distance, except for the Jester. The Jester is actually more expensive, but uh, air unit that everyone has access to that's the most expensive at T1 is the transport. And T2 land is the plan. Seems like a decent plan, but the energy management has been really lacking for Thomas. Unfortunately, and you never like to, well, blame things on e economy management because it sort of should be good enough for both players at this point that it doesn't have too big of a role. Of course, it's always relevant how efficient you are economically, but you shouldn't be stalling power for long long periods of time in a game Tagada only making T2 mixes now so he's quite late but he is making two at once he's making getting some assistance on them and he has mass in the bank so he's f completing them quite quickly this raid is annoying but not too devastating at all two T2 mix T1 mixes go down the tanks are quite annoying and drag tanks back to the base, but ultimately not too important because Tagada secured the bottom side quite easily. Top side also he has grabbed these mexes and now may even grab the corner mexes for a period of time. Has some tanks there which will eventually be caught and killed, but right now Thomas does not have, well, his army is really lacking. Another problem with the power stall slowed his production greatly and he didn't have a great number of factories either so his T1 land force is very weak he needs fast T2 land production now you can see immediately making two support factories once the HQ went up even getting some assistance I think it is good to assist uh, the support factories as they're upgrading the trick though you have to make sure that you actually have the resources to run those support factories after they're finished because if you look here to make a support factory it's going to drain minus four mass as it's upgrading to the t2 support factory but once it starts making units it's going to spend double that so always keep that in mind your drain as those support factories are upgrading is going to be less than uh, significantly less than when they actually finish upgrading and start producing those T2 units. 
things like that, information like that is very useful for uh, managing your economy as you transition into more T2 land production. The corner is removed from Tagada's hands, but we can see the timing here is uh, not favorable for Thomas in this exchange. Tagada with the bottom for quite a while and even getting a raid off here now with some T1 units. Tagada's T1 unit advantage is, well this is the main use of it I guess, this raid here. <laughs> and getting the corner but now it's going to be all about T2 and Tagada is not slow to T2. Thomas is not going to get a huge advantage it seems. Well actually, now that I look there's no support factories so in a few minutes perhaps we will see Thomas have a more significant T2 army. Oh, there's units in the back. As long as Thomas can actually afford to run the support factories, and he can just about. I mean, he needs a little bit of reclaim, surely. And maybe he can pause some T1 factories. But he should be able to run this. Should be able to get the mass required. This, this is annoying. It's killing some... Po power as he's making his T2P gen so we'll have to see if that probably won't be relevant really. I don't think it will cause a stall but he does need to deal with this. Another annoying drop coming in uh, but this one has been found and will be killed. Tagada though has how many T2 mexes can Thomas see? You can see three versus two for Thomas. Thomas is making two at once and just as I say that, pause is one. Very good. At least his P-Gens are ready to be reclaimed. That's not the worst thing, and he can get some tank reclaim as well. Just have to keep four Mongoose in the base so for a while. You can see he's going for Mongoose. We have no pillars so far. Once he gets the P-Gen up, we should see shields mixed in. And Mongoose quite good in this patch and look at that he's going Tiger is going mongoose as well I think in UEF mongoose is a very good unit I think the pillar that it could go up against is not the best unit matchup for the mongoose though pillar is actually quite good versus the mongoose in my opinion with its decent speed Great HP. Spam ability. I think making pillars versus mongoose should be fine. I think ideally you want to make a mix, really. I think a mix of mongoose and pillar is uh, good. And of course, pirate shields. You've got to have pirate shields, especially for the mongoose, of course. Pillar doesn't really need the extra HP, but it's always nice. And this is a terrible fight for Thomas. Very bad move order. Breaking formation against the cliff. And Tagada taking full advantage. Look at this. This fight was very, very good for Tagada. Extremely good, in fact. He's immediately in there manually reclaiming T2 Rex. I approve greatly of that. One, two, three, four. Has a few more. That's get easily over a thousand mass from that and you do want to manually the reclaim at times in the game for example early t3 early t2 these units are important and the trees are going to slow him down greatly if he doesn't use the manual reclaim orders it's fully worth that apm investment far more than worth it thomas is making t2 in the top Trying to sneak some units around. He has some artillery to get rid of the PD. On the bottom, units are congregating. And this is why Tagada's ACU has managed to get two upgrades in its expansion. T2 and the gun. Crotch cam enabled. And the mongoose get to fight. Somebody was saying mongoose plural should be mongoose. But of course a mongoose is not a goose and therefore that is a silly idea it is mongooses 
I really don't know what it is, but I'm going to guess it's actually not monkeys. <laughs> Somebody can fact check me. If they want. Alright. Thomas thought he could get a good engagement here. He was sorely mistaken because it, he's run straight into the ACU. Now he did get some kills. But those are mainly... Look like decently even trades. The power shields are doing very well, but they all drop now for Thomas. And uh, he has to retreat, allow those to regen. It won't take too long. Won't take too long at all. Actually, is he... Was, did he just stall power there? Oh, he may have just stalled power, actually. Now that I look at it, another P-Gen is very much needed. He did stall power because he's pausing and unpausing his ACU to finish the gun upgrade. Now he has unpaused it as he's retreated out of range. He's also making T2 air. There's some things he could do here to mitigate the stall. He's being a bit lazy, honestly. <laughs> when you don't micro that a bit, you know. I think that's kind of just being lazy, honestly. Thomas now he has 55 mass income, 63 for Tagata. A bit better for Tagata. Tagata is going to lose these units. Will Thomas manually reclaim them? If he doesn't, it's not really going to be that bad for Tagata. Well, actually, the monkeys get away. I just called them monkeys. <laughs> The mongooses got away. Oh, who cares what they called? Tagada is potentially... No, he should be completely fine. Completely fine. Look at this army. 18 mongoose versus... Well, we got some pillars. Where did the shields go? The air is moving in. Needs to be careful because there are multiple flags in Thomas's army. And uh, Thomas, oh, he can't fight here. He has seven pillars and seven mongoose, but without radar, it's not possible to have any reasonable engagement. Of course, because, you know, look at all this range he has that he can't use. Very nice T2 radar snipe. Always snipe T2 radars. No exceptions to that rule. There's exceptions to most rules, but always snipe T2 radar has no exception and Thomas has just dropped his ACU into the middle of this fray to fight against no don't run back run towards them the overcharge seemed to be targeting some unit that missed and now Thomas is out of range because of that move order and he's not shooting meanwhile Taggart is getting kills the mongoose are running away and getting just murdering the entire army everything is dead now Firing a couple of pillars and lobos. The transport is gone. So there won't be any retreat. And Tagata with this army can surely kill Thomas Hyatt. Elsewhere on the map, not much happening. Everything is focused here on these ACUs. And that's an even worse sign for Thomas. He's under so much pressure. The Gatling gun is melting him. And he's not dodging at all. You can dodge this Gatling gun fire. But it would slow him down getting into the water. Still probably worth it. He gets into the water at around half HP. More pillars coming out of the base. Actually tagging and mixing in pillars now as well. For whatever reason. And... Uh, well, some decent reinforcements have come out. Thomas needs to emerge from the water and do some damage. This shield is going to block an overcharge. It's quite annoying. Ideally, he can remove that. I think he just overcharged the shield, though. <laughs> and maybe he can get some kills. Oh, there's PD up now. That overcharge only kills one mongoose. Meanwhile, Tagata takes out two pillars and a third with his regular gun. Thomas is going to go down. There's no doubt. He's just suiciding at this point. PD at point blank range doing a lot of damage oh the mongoose is just not getting hit there that's not good the old sideways my hitbox is tiny maneuver 
There's a few units that have that uh, issue. Loyalists can dodge things. S ACUs used to be able to dodge things like <laughs> lasers <laughs> by moving sideways. They still can, I believe, but it's much more difficult. The angle is much smaller that they need to hit. Anyway, that is beside the point. Tagada is now 2 1 up in this best of five series. We're going to move to a fourth game. And let's see whether Tagada will end the series here or if Thomas will take us to a fifth map. Some must win game for Thomas Hyatt. The map will be Emerald Crater. And we've seen Tagada on uh, on Emerald Crater and he won against Turbo in a previous video in the same tournament of course so let's see how he does against Thomas no offense to Turbo but Thomas is a stronger opponent we have a couple of Cybrans once again so much Cybran now we did have, I think uh, certainly seems like one of these guys is choosing their faction and the other <laughs> chooses the same one. Because we had a UEF mirror last time, which, I'd, you know, I take a UEF mirror over a cyber mirror at this point for sure. Nice to see the mongoose at perhaps its most powerful since, uh, well, maybe... <laughs> It used to be the range bots were the, the greatest units. So it's certainly not the strongest the Mongoose has ever been. That's definitely not true, but it's the strongest it's been in many years. Some people think it's too strong. I tend to agree. But we won't have any Mongoose. We probably won't have any Hoplites either on this map. Although I think the speed is certainly nice for hoplites, but then you could just go for uh, Wagners. This map is all about, uh, well, it's very heavy on T1 spam. T1 land spam and air spam. And engaging in all these little battles around the place. Whether you're trying to drop your opponent's corner, reclaim yours from your opponent. Get a raid into the three mix expansions between the bases. Control the middle or, well, the sides generally you grab one and you hold it. And maybe apply pressure from there into the middle or down here. But you really shouldn't have too much trouble getting one of these main sides. If you do, that is not going to end well for you. It's going to be trouble. Thomas Hyatt has not left the base. Tagada is moving very quickly towards the three mechs expansion and then on to the main expansion on the left. Thomas with a gigantic two mass reclaimed and about 11 power. So that's probably one or two trees. <laughs> it all helps. 16 power. So, air factory is complete after the equivalent of eight power generators. Seven for ti no eight. Sorry, he had one over here. And air is done. Slightly faster for Tagada, I guess. Judging by where the air scouts are, we also have many land scouts from both players. This engineer has a an escort of a land scout. Not sure why you wouldn't send the scout ahead of the engineer to spot something coming. But uh, that's just me. I guess the air scouts will certainly spot them. Many, many air scouts. Look at this. Four air scouts. Five air scouts from Thomas. This camp. Is that is that real? Is that intentional? Bit of power waste, which is never what you want to see at uh, three and a half minutes. I feel like I'm being overly harsh or... Uh, Maybe I'm just focusing on Thomas a little bit too much. Like I'm telling. 
pointing out every mistake he's making or theoretically is making. Tagada also wastes a power there. He has a second air factory up. Not so many air scouts for him, only two. You can see they really don't cover that much. We've got to keep them on the move and Tagada, if he can catch some of these, I think he has caught one at least of these air scouts. Catches another one. And that shouldn't be underestimated. Those are very nice to to, uh, to catch those units. You can see by how many he's invested in that they are useful, or he believes they're useful. And I tend to agree. But they're not so useful. This, this is the problem with having them just patrolling in a location. And this is a large location, but in a smaller patrol, they're very likely to get uh, killed by an opponent. He is actually chasing them to kill this one and should be able to, a lack of power tells me there's a transport coming and the stall didn't last for too long there so not too bad, quite nice actually. Transport is done, where is Thomas's transport? These transports are not exactly the most, uh, not the quickest transports, I'll say. We're at five minutes now. Thomas doesn't seem to have it in his mind right now as of yet. And I don't know why, really. Transport is very, very useful, necessary on this map. And faster expansion wins games. Will this engineer die? It doesn't look like it. Down to 65 HP. Moves out of the way of these mexes to uh, avoid annoying mantis and get his factory done he's lacking mass though so that may take a while thomas walked past this expansion allowed an engineer to stand around grabbing mexes the uh, ooh, this annoying air scout has just flew past dodging some shots from inties and the air scouts hmm, i wonder how good they've been. I'm sure they've spotted this uh, mantis that was attacking here. There wasn't too much else to spot, honestly. No bomber, no labs, not many mantis attacking, honestly. Tagada now can see as engineers in both of his corners. Thomas in one. This guy has a long way around to go. On the left, we have the drop and a quick hydro six maxes will be complete in about 20 seconds well most of them are complete now we just wait on this one and again significantly faster than what thomas has achieved on this side still no transport a jester okay where is the jester going to go you can see both of them scouting each other's corners thomas has scouted here He's going to scout here now. Tagada is scouting this location, and we can see why he's going to pick up. Maybe he's going to pick up a couple of engineers. That would be the play. If he grabs, if he has some tanks and some engineers, and he does bring one engineer. One engineer, four mantis, and a scout. I say that's pretty good. I think actually two engineers would be better. Three engineers. You want to get a factory up here, make some units so that a single transport drop will not. Uh, reclaim this expansion you want to build some defenses here but one engineer is certainly far better than zero you'll at least get the mexes and if Thomas doesn't react quickly enough then uh, perhaps he won't be able to reclaim that expansion factory up in the corner hydros coming Thomas looks to have quite a few units spreading across the map looking for damage to be done but we have to take note that he's behind because of slower expansion and this is very risky what is this he's going for an air fight and he's not gonna win it at all actually that's the opposite of winning known as losing and that's a misclick I'm sure that he well, rather than a misclick, I'd say he 
targeted something that he really should not have targeted and forgot about it until he saw his inties in the middle of Tagata's cloud. That's a insanely good mantis that just killed two engineers here. So there won't be any PD here or anything. It's going to take a while to get that mechs back. He could finish the mechs with the mantis. The drop has landed here and it's going to be very effective. Some raiding on the outside. Still missing a mechs in this expansion. This uh, we've had damage but well no really no damage here just some reclaim left the jester in the corner is very annoying look at this engineer is killed before it can complete the factory and all the mexes will die because there's no inties in the area and only looks like there's one sent after this jester so this is denied mantis from the base now being sent to the lower left expansion and you gotta react fast to stop people setting up a camp up there and uh, this gesture is far less effective than the one in the left corner now he's gonna run gonna fly towards the corner the middle quite even slightly better for Thomas in terms of mexes but there's a base here and we don't really have a base in the middle for Thomas no quick reinforcements only one factory producing mantis the rest are in his home base he has a t2 max Tagada I would be surprised if he doesn't he does have a t2 max as well but ecoing is uh, not the priority right now now is the time to fight for all of these expansions this is prime time here Tagada knows he has been given a really nice advantage thanks to Thomas suiciding his air so Tagada really needs to focus on on this land battle he needs to keep his factories alive here and without Medusa I think he should be able to nice mix of mobile land here but we don't have land scouts and we don't have Medusa without Medusa these factories should survive and actually regen back to full HP this expansion with no defenses clearly stands no chance left gets dropped at least they have a factory to finish quite quickly but as he drops there the right side looks to be dying now this is usually a mistake to give an attack order I think he gave an attack order on a factory because that will stop the units from uh, shooting units that will come out of the factory so if you want to kill something like this with just a small number of mantis you don't want to actually attack the factory you want to just stand next to the factory kill everything that comes out of it and when it's building stuff then you shoot the factory automatically we have a drop here and that's not going to work two engineers two mantis and the game looks to be swinging Tagada's way as he is taking out expansion after expansion left and he has reclaimed he's taken this uh, for his own not just damaged it Thomas has done damage here but does not have the mass or the the hydro or a factory there and the middle does not look good this has been a terrible attack look at the amount of reclaim left right next to Tagada's build power he lost one factory almost lost a second but again Cybrans gonna regen those factories they have low HP but they do regen this Jester has 12 kills wow I think we previously featured it <laughs> in this location where it really wasn't needed because there's just so much spam from Tagada Thomas is going to T2 land now Tagada meanwhile Building gestures, building all T1, it seems. No T2 for him. He's making T2 on his ACU, at least. That might be a good way to get a T2 P gen up. It's certainly going to be a good way to hold on to this expansion, but really it looks really bad for, for Thomas right now. There's so many Mantis here on this side of the map, and there's very few for Thomas. 
targeted with a 1.5 kill differential. I wonder how much of that is due to the air fight. Have to wonder. But it's definitely not solely due to that. Targeted with only a small mass advantage, but in terms of how the map looks, it looks very bad for Thomas. How much? How many mantis do we have here? 124 mantis. Somehow we have some accidental labs, or he's gonna make some ghettos. Don't know if they were an accidental, but he is making a ghetto. <laughs> Just quite nice. 130 mantis now versus. 50 and we have three hoplites in the base as well They need to be moving out And now going for rhinos. I uh, might stick with the hoplites honestly At this point The potential of a hoplite is really a lot better than a, a potential of Of a rhino in my opinion because you can keep those hoplites alive for a very long time if you use them correctly they will will not die and uh, a rhino is always bound to get into range I mean sir a rhino does have more range than mantis but you have a lot less to work with so it's harder to get more insane value out of a out of a rhino in my opinion when you're behind you need the highest potential for a, for a comeback to to happen. Also, rhinos instead of Wagners on such a large map. I think I want the speed. Thomas, however, he's not really thinking about his T2 land, really. He is thinking about how the hell he can win the game. And T2 land is not really going to do it, is it? Now, gun and stealth may do it. If he could get... Right next to this guy on the other side of the map. I think people may remember how Turbo's game ended with Tiger on this map. If you don't know, then you should <laughs> check out that video. It's quite a dramatic ending. And Thomas may have seen that as well. He may have seen the game. I definitely didn't see the video. <laughs> by the time he's playing this game but uh, he may have seen the replay I don't know could he have similar ideas well he's pushing back now with his land towards Tagata's ACU and he's also pushing towards the mid with his ACU and T1 units he's getting raided though still this it's quite painful for him. Six Mantis dropped to the back and they may take out this factory if he doesn't react quickly. He only has six, four Mantis there versus six. That is bad. It's a negative for him. Three Wagners, 160 Mantis. T2 land is up then. Eight T2 units, 74 Mantis no vision he is blind essentially he has it doesn't know where the ACU is he doesn't know much else and now he oh it's, he has to now run back to his expansion where units are running in from the fog of war and they are killing his base that he had left shortly before Tagata just running, running, running from these T2 units. Keep the long, keep the hoplite alive. Tagata wondering how Thomas has mass for, I guess, the T2 army that he has. But uh, really, Thomas just made a lot less T1 land, I think. And you know, Thomas does still have some T2 mexes. Let's have some expansions and perhaps he got some reclaim as well. Hoplites are doing amazing. Rhinos up against Wagners. Yeah, they're all approaching their first vet or on it. 
needs the land scout, he needs air scouts, he needs all kinds of scouting, he needs radar. It's so sad to see a map looking like this. Can't play in darkness. Tagada just has units everywhere. Has the entire middle now. It's has for a while. And it may have been going on this uh, map control has probably been going far too long. He's actually taken this expansion. Of course he still has this. Should probably stop yeah, he has stopped investing in defensive units there. This is not gonna be reclaimed by a rhino. Not a chance. It's going to be a mass donation in fact. Thomas runs away now. Decides he doesn't want to donate that to Tagada's cause. T2 air now from Tagada. Makes another T2 max. He is not really echoing very much. Really using all of his mass to, uh, to continue making units and maintain his map control rather than turn his map control into higher tech mass extractors in safe locations he's just gonna keep making units and keep Thomas out of his expansions which is probably a good decision that, that said he doesn't want to stop equaling actually no he's yeah I missed these two so they're quite good and Thomas is actually calling it GG that's pretty fair to call it there now, to be honest. With the expansions looking the way they are. Pity the hoplites thing to do more. You can see they did pretty well already. But uh, yeah, this T2 land is going to be too little too late, no doubt. So, well played Tagada, the winner. Perhaps unlikely winner. Of Legend of Stars qualifier number 2 beating Thomas Hyatt 3-1 in the best of five final. Well played Tagada. I don't know. I wonder has Tagada won other 1v1 tournaments before. It might be his first win. Hmm. May have won some blitzes or something beforehand. I don't know but either way congratulations to him. And also to Thomas for making it to the final. This is a very difficult tournament we had Ajax we had Bladir we had uh, everyone basically who hadn't qualified Petrick was in this tournament uh, yeah Robo gear all kinds of strong players so uh, well done check out the links in my description check out the patreon and I'll see you soon in the next video guys bye